tonight. It's wonderful to see you all. It really, really is. Um, we absolutely love this community. Nice to have some moms in the house that are visiting. Um, so thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, you're in for a treat. Um, Wendy's going to speak tonight. And when I was thinking about how to introduce this amazing woman, I remember the first time kind of meeting her and Chris. And uh, I think they were checking us out because both their daughters were coming here. <laughs> and I remember meeting them and thinking, oh, Lord, if only some people like that would join our church, literally. I literally remember thinking that about the two of them. And then they would pop in fairly often. And, you know, whenever they came, they brought mounds of food and they would welcome people at the door and do the most amazing things. And they just became like, they felt like, they were part of us. And oh my goodness, the day when they told us that they were actually joining us was just moving, a, from, moving from Rancho Cucamonga and coming to live down here and join our church was just the most incredible blessing. And they've, they have become um, friends. And we really love you, Chris and Wendy, and um, so enjoy our time with you. And Wendy, I think the, the way that I could introduce her is to say, I have literally seen what the gospel can do in transforming a person's story in Wendy. That That is probably, because she's told us in our little midweek, our, our home group, she told us her story, and I remember looking at her and thinking, that doesn't match what I see, because what I know about Wendy is an incredible woman of faithfulness, an incredible woman of faith. When she prays, I literally, I just, I want to capture her prayers, record them, and then play them over and over and over, over my life. She prays so beautifully. But what I've seen in Wendy is a woman who took, who took the word of God and what he said and she made it her own. And every day she made it her own. And she has lived a life that you can just see the handiwork of God in her life because she made it her own. So, Wendy, we are in for such a treat. And it is such a privilege to call you up. And I'm going to pray over you. Yeah. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this woman. We thank you for this incredible vessel of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, that she has everything she needs to impart the story of her life, the story of you at work in her, Christ in her, the hope of glory. And I just lift this beautiful woman up to you. I say, Holy Spirit, I know that you dwell richly in her. Would you have your way through her? I pray for us as the hearers, would we open our ears, would we really open our hearts to you, Spirit of God, the living God, tonight to encounter you, to hear you, for you to come in and transform us in your wonderful name, amen. Beautiful. <laughs> Who are these sinners, Wendy? Who are family. these sinners? Your oh family. family. <laughs> Is that your husband included? Is he wolf whistling you? I still want to know the true story about who asked who out on a date. I've heard two different versions twice. So I need to hear the truth tonight, Wendy. Tonight is the night the truth will set us free. Well, thank you for that introduction. And you guys have become just as much of family as in opened your your hearts and your doors for us um, to become part of this family. So we're thankful for it. And the songs that were sung tonight kind of threw me off a little bit. And um, they could have just told the story right there and we could close the book and I'll go home. But unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately. And then um, last week, Chris and Meryl kindly set the table for me this week when they talked about identity. And so my story is a story where formation forms that identity and has formed my identity. So um, I think even being able to share on Mother's Day is just an, an added gift for me because 
making someone a mother and becoming a mother myself are pivotal points in that story. So with that being uh, one of the earliest memories I have is of my mom explaining to me that um, she had to hide me under her wedding dress and um, how much shame it brought her. And she shared this, all I know, to express how glad she was that she didn't end her pregnancy with me when she tried to and when she wanted to, to, to end her own shame. And I know she loved me, but I was just way too young to process what she had told me when she told me that. And so I felt like I was a mistake. I, um, I felt like I was a reminder to the family of the mistake that they had made. And I was a reminder of the family of like shame that was going to go forward. And um, so it was, it was really painful. And then men came in and took anything else that was left inside of me. Um, physically and sexually abused at a young child. I went into my teenage years feeling worthless. I looked for others for that sense of worth. And when they said I failed them, I felt empty and purposeless. I looked for someone to be my savior, but ended up feeling let down and abandoned time and time again. And so I got to know Jesus through shame and finger pointing and judgment casting and parents who position themselves against people, those Jesus followers who don't like us. And so I believed that there was a God. I, I thought I knew him, but I didn't think he cared much about me. I came to know Jesus as a child through the people who introduced him to me, through their interpretation of who they thought he was the way I was treated or not treated, the way I was loved or not loved. And so I got to know Jesus, and I got to know me, and neither of them did I like. So I took the name, shame, mistake, unwanted. I tried numbing my life with substances, but soon came to realize that was just another thing that wanted to dominate control over me and it wasn't for me. So I went completely the opposite way, and I tried to, to beat my body into to obedience. To, to, I was going to make myself right. I was going to make myself perfect. I just wanted the pain to stop. I never felt at home anywhere or safe, not even with myself. I remember shouting to no one in particular that this was not my home, I begged to go to sleep and never wake up. I tried to take my life into my own hands, but even sleep was too scary for me. And I failed there as well. Neither in life or death could I find peace. Looking back now, I can see little glimmers of grace that were making their way into my life. I would walk by myself through the woods, and I would look at the fields and the trees, and I would wonder, who takes care of all of these? Surely someone must care for them. In my early teens, I was gifted a week at a Christian summer camp, and I felt like I was an outsider hearing about this Savior that they followed, and I wanted to be saved. I heard about the changes I needed to make but it all seemed impossible, and all the enthusiasm faded when I went back to everyday life and had to face the everyday situations. I was gifted Bibles and books, and I ended up becoming friends with people who would tell me about Jesus, but none of it made sense next to the reality of what was going on in my life, and none of it seemed to have any changing or saving power that these people were telling me about. So living in abandonment, I found myself pregnant, facing the choice of what I felt like was going to be giving this baby a, a life what I had just lived or putting an end to it. I could turn around and make a different story. I could 
do something different than my life than what had happened with my parents. So I decided to continue in shame, and I hid, and I ended the pregnancy. I resolved I was going to get married, live a perfect life with a perfect order. I would find someone who wanted to marry me, and then I would be proved valuable. I thought my husband would save me, and we would live happily ever after. I did get a ring on my finger. We did get married. And then three months into our marriage, my dad would be killed in an accident. I would become pregnant again and miscarry. And I was just living with this great sense of guilt, a sense that God was punishing me. I became pregnant again, and I was gifted a subscription to Christian Parenting Magazine. I remember in one of the issues, there was an article about reading for your children, praying for your children, and I was, um, just started praying for them, not only them, but their future spouse, their future children. And it turned into praying for their parents and just turned into so much more. Overwhelmed by the responsibility of raising a child, I set a Bible by my rocking chair. And out of desperation, I threatened to give God one more chance. Every time I rocked this precious life to sleep, I would pull out my Bible from the basket and I would read, begging God, that if he was real and he did care, that he would make his word make sense to me. I thought I was giving him one more chance, but now I know he had given me multiple second chances. His love and mercy poured out. I opened his word and it made sense to me. And there my conversations with God started. About this time, I went back to school to get a degree in early childhood development, and I was learning about the development of children, but at the same time, I was learning about my development. I started to, to see what was going on in me when I was a child. I recognized my own unhealthy patterns and behaviors. About the same time, my husband had a co-worker inviting us to church and speaking character into his life. I was doing child development hours working in a Christian school, and we started attending church. Now, it may sound like good things were happening, but it felt like my soul was tearing apart. And I now believe that it really was. The old self was splitting away from the new self bringing new truths into my marriage and other relationships meant renegotiating bonds and boundaries. It meant letting go of some things and holding on to others. I had to learn how to express my feelings, voice things that were acceptable and those that weren't. There were tough years. I sought counsel. There were some times of separation Honestly, it was just so painful. Believing God wasn't just my ticket into the next life. There was a baptism of forgiveness, but there were numerous spiritual encounters that couldn't leave me where I was left. They moved me closer and deeper in him. I learned to trust. He became my savior again and again. God was making me new. Where I felt empty, Holy Spirit filled me up. When I felt overlooked, Jesus let me experience. He was seeing me. When I felt like wasted life, God spoke to me about how my life wasn't just for me, but for the good of others and gave me a testimony testimony to share his goodness. 
when I thought my life was purposeless. He opened up his plans to me, giving me life to keep fighting for. His word was a lifeline for me. He taught me about fear and anxiety by showing me how he cared for the lilies and the birds in the field. And I knew he was there in the field and the trees those years before. I read in his word about this was not my permanent home and to look forward to a home yet to come. And I remembered feeling out of place, longing for a place to be welcomed and safe. I started to understand the value of my body as God's temple and his protection over it. He spoke so personal to me as I read about him knowing me and searching me out and forming my inward parts, knitting me together in my mother's womb. But he saw my unformed substance and the days formed for me. I found a body of believers at a church that became like family to me. And in that body, I found a small group of women that believed in me, that let me be real and carried me when it seemed too hard to go on. Little by little, I let God find me. And I got to know him the way he introduced himself to me. And I got to know me through his interpretation of how he sees me. I see Jesus, and I know he sees me. Becoming a mom let me see my own need and became my motivation to see life from a new vantage point. Being able to love comes from what I believe about myself and what I believe about God. I could never be anyone's savior, and no person could ever be mine. I will always be imperfect. People will always be imperfect. Influential voices were never meant to take the place of God. People are meant to point us to our Savior, carry us there if need be. Spiritual birth was just the beginning, and the formation will continue until I see our Savior face to face. Spiritual birth is just the beginning. This month, my husband and I will be married 33 years. I have three beautiful daughters, inside and out. They have chosen three men that I love as if I've known them their entire life. And I have, to this date, three grandchildren. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen.